Can you be right here next to me? Thank you. That's great. I'm calling. You come in. Come in close. Okay. Come in close. Um. Yeah, to the side. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, just, yeah. it's okay. Right here. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, all right. Well, great. Um, so good morning, everyone. We are uh, so happy to see everyone. Happy to be here today and happy to talk about how we're deepening our commitment to a more inclusive Massachusetts. I want to recognize those in the administration and the community who are here um, and who are leading this work. Our Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kate Walsh. Undersecretary for Human Services, Mary McGoin. Commissioner Tony Wolf and the team uh, from what for now is is called Mass Rehabilitation <laughs> Commission, but more on that. Commissioner Jane Ryder from the Department of Developmental Services. Uh, Commissioner John Oliveira from the Mass Commission for the Blind. I also want to acknowledge legislative partners in this, Jay Livingstone and Senator Nick Collins. Uh, service providers and employers like Colleen Holmes from Viability. Cindy Walker and all of the community members and advocates who help lead this work. Thank you all for being here today. Before I begin, I just want to take a moment to express our concern and sympathy with members of the deaf and hard of hearing community. Uh, Lewiston was a really, really tough event. It deeply impacted this community, of course, and um, those include those who, who know and, and worked uh, with uh, Stephen Vasella. Um, but our hearts go out to, of course, Stephen's family. Um, and to all the friends and families of, of the victims. Um, but I just, particularly in this, in this room and this morning, um, I just wanted to take a moment of silence to honor them. So our news, our news today is about, as I said, strengthening Massachusetts and the entire disability community. We do that by building on the critical work and the mission of what has long been known as the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission, MRC. As folks in this room know, MRC provides services that break down barriers and empower people to live, to work, to thrive in Massachusetts. It builds community, it raises awareness, and it lifts up the deep and diverse strengths of our residents. It's work that makes us stronger as a state. So today, as part of a comprehensive rebranding and re-envisioning, we're filing legislation that will change the name of MRC to Mass Ability. Now, this name change is aimed at reducing stigma for uh, folks uh, with disabilities in the community. It's going to help us ensure that no one is left behind in their efforts to pursue um, strong livelihoods, living, working, thriving, as I said, here in the state. It will modernize the language across all enabling statutes with the aim of removing outdated and stigmatizing terms. These changes will provide clarity and consistency. Uh, rehabilitation is a term that is no longer relevant to the work of mass ability or something is wrong or needs to be fixed. So I just want to really thank the team that worked to come together extensively doing outreach with consumers, providers, partners, uh, stakeholders across the board so that we could really capture through a name, a name that makes sense and uh, captures the full range of services that the agency offers. So we look forward to working with our legislative partners to make this official. Um, language matters, words matter, and that's why we were very intentional about um, this, this name change. Now the goals of MassAbility remain the same, that is to expand reach, better address the needs of the community, and to usher in new, more expansive models for disability employment services and independent living. It's a moment to seize this opportunity. Inclusive employment is a matter of justice, and it's essential to our need to grow a workforce, strengthen our economy, strengthen communities. Um, this administration is very much uh, interested in modeling the absolute best practices, and we're looking forward to doing everything that we can to make Massachusetts state government the most inclusive of any state government or employer 
in the country. I'm asking all employers inside and outside of government to do the same thing here in Massachusetts. And to that end, we have a new tool, the Disability Employment Tax Credit, or DETC, enacted last year. After 12 months of continuous employment, employers can t claim a tax credit equal to $5,000 or 30 percent of the wages paid to each qualified employee with a disability. In each subsequent tax year, employers are allowed a credit equal to $2,000 or 30 percent of the wages paid to each qualified employee. You can go online soon to the MassAbility website at mass.gov and fill out a certification form to establish eligibility. Um, we celebrated Disability Employment Awareness Month uh, just recently, but really every month in Massachusetts should be about disability employment awareness. And I know it will be, thanks to the work of MassAbility and the great team, and thanks to the continued work and collaboration of those of you in this room. So wonderful to see you all. And it is now my honor to bring uh, to the podium our fabulous Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kate Walsh. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Governor. Uh, both you and the Lieutenant Governor have been so supportive throughout this entire process, from the moment we shared this new name all the way up to today's filing. It's truly an honor for me to be part of an administration that is so genuinely and wholeheartedly committed to eliminating barriers and increasing opportunity. And today we finally get to share our new name with you, and I'm really thrilled with the new name. It's Mass Ability. Mass Ability, or currently Mass Rehabilitation Commission, is one of 11 agencies within the Executive Office of Health and Human Services. We employ more than 22,000 people. Our services touch one out of three of our neighbors and friends and family across the Commonwealth. Yet despite our reach uh, uh, and, the, and the great services we offer, like those that MRC offers, we're not reaching everyone we could be. In Massachusetts, more than 800,000 people are living with a disability. There is so much potential in our programs, in our services, but most importantly, in our clients. And especially when I think about our workforce crisis, I think the, of the mismatch between our clients and the, and the jobs we need filled. Our state needs workers, and our residents with disabilities need jobs. And the Mass Rehab Commission exists to eliminate that gap. So why isn't everyone taking advantage of these programs and services? Well, I think some are rightly confused about rehabilitation and what it means in this context. And some might be put off by the implication that people with disabilities need fixing. And some, quite frankly, maybe haven't heard of MRC. There's a lot of alphabet, uh, alphabet agencies in government. But thanks to the leadership of Governor, Governor uh, Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll and the really hard work of the MRC team, we're changing that. With this new proposed name, and a new public awareness campaign and, a continu and our continuing commitment to Bay Staters with Disabilities, we're evolving and changing to meet the moment and meet consumers where they're at. The name MassAbility captures all the untapped potential that's unlocked by the agency's employment and independent living services. MassAbility conveys the message that employees with disabilities have unique lived experience perspectives, skill sets, mindsets, and representation that other non-disabled employees can offer. They're an asset to any employer. MassAbility is a critical component of our path forward as a more equitable, affordable, and competitive state. Thank you again, Governor Healy, and for everyone in our, in our administration for your unwavering commitment to advancing equity and inclusion. Thank you to everyone who worked so hard on this project and contributed their perspectives to the naming pro process. And thank you especially to Commissioner Wolf for your vision, leadership, and I'm going to divert from my note, patience with a new secretary. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, when Tony and I first talked about it, they said, oh, I said, that sounds great. Change the name. And she said, not so fast, yeah. secretary. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to turn it over for you now to, uh, to, so you can tell uh, how you brought me along in this process and, uh, and got us to today. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am so excited to say mass ability. Yes. I cannot say enough. We are so excited. And I see so many of you that were part of our journey, and I'm really grateful that you're here today and really thankful for all your efforts. So when we began this journey, which was over 
two and a half years ago. We wanted to honor the history of the disability movement and at the same time propel it forward. That was really important to us. To the disability members, I want to say to you this. We heard you. We listened to you. We took your advice. And we heard you. And what we understood was that our name and our language needed to inspire a catalyst of change. The most poignant moment for me, and as the secretary mentioned, was when a young adult stated, I am not broken. Why is there rehabilitation in the name of a disability agency? For me, that was an aha moment. We needed to change that. The biggest barrier people with disabilities face is how society disables them. Let me say that again so that you understand this. The biggest barriers people with disabilities face is how society disables them. Governor Healy and Lieutenant uh, Dristel and Secretary understands that the importance of this work and puts their commitment into action not only with our language change and our name of our agency, but also the focus on accessibility, the focus on housing, the focusing on community, and equally on the economic development policies that truly inspires and changes people's lives in housing and in the labor force. I really want to thank you. The stigma around disabilities stems from misconceptions and has a significant impact on those making hiring and housing decisions. But together, we can change that. We can change that uneducated bias and change the way people think about people with disabilities. Landlords and employers are recognizing the talent individuals have and bring, wanting to bring them into the workforce and into the communities. And I see many of you here all shaking your head, and you know that. So let me just say this in a very simple way. We believe in a common truth, that when we work together, we expand what's possible for individuals with disabilities. We expand hope. We expand pride. We expand self-determination. And we expand voice in our communities. Our ability to expand what's possible is at the core of what we are about. And that is why today we are proud to say we are mass ability. Thank you so much for being here and hanging in with us. We're here. Thank you. I just want to introduce Cindy Walker. Um, and we really appreciate your coming to uh, really uh, help help show what this is about and what this means. So, Cindy. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank Good morning. you so much. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you for all the support from the administration and our leadership. And um, yeah, so my name is Cindy Walker. Yes, that's an oxymoron. Um, <laughs> I spent all night working on that <laughs> um, So uh, what brought me here was back um, February 7th of 1995, at the age of 14, <laughs> um, I went to bed like normal folks do, and I woke in the morning to sheer panic. Um, I, to my shock and utter disbelief, I had no movement or feeling from the waist down. So over the course of the next few months, that included lengthy hospital stay, hundreds of doctor's appointments, as most of you know, um, and spinal taps. I was finally diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called transverse myelitis, um, and was told, <laughs> Roxy, you're making me get all teary. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, but I was told I would never walk again. Um, and so luckily for me, though, my mother had been a um, VR counselor with Mass Rehab for my entire life. So. My, um, so my involvement, my family's relationship with MRC started 40 years ago. Yes, I am that old. Um, so her first call when I was paralyzed was to the agency. Um, and um, as, so as I was tra transitioning, excuse me, from living to, into my rehab facility, back into my home, MRC was instrumental in making sure I had 
necessary adaptations, the mobility devices I needed to live as independently as possible. So the phrases I was so familiar my mother with, the phrases I was so familiar hearing from my mother speak to her own clients now became the encouraging and hopeful words I needed to hear during my darkest of days. How can we help you? What can we do for you? How can we get you working and living independently and safely in your community? And although a lot has changed in the world since I received my life-altering diagnosis, as we know, many stigmas and detrimental treatments of individuals with disabilities remain. But Massability is working to change that. Two years ago, I was fortunate enough to reconnect with the agency as a disability inclusion leader. Um, <laughs> and um, once again, I saw the agency's mission spring back to life, well, come to, back into my life. Through this innovative collaboration, people with lived experiences, people with disabilities, people like me, are now involved in providing feedback, guidance, and expertise in all areas where decisions are being made and ultimately improve services, service delivery. So fast forward to today, I'm thrilled to say that I have been recently hired as MRC, Mass Abilities <laughs> <laughs> Communication Coordinator, ironically, yeah. <laughs> um, where I have the honor to share these stories, craft impactful messaging, connect participants to resources, and provide support to the incredible colleagues and organization that, I've lit, that have literally kept me going my entire life. Massachusetts, and MassAbility especially, is a model employer. We don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk, or in my case, roll the roll. <laughs> <laughs> um, so some people might think that name change is irrelevant, but names and impactful messaging are synonymous with hope. They inspire feelings and shift perspectives. The name change is so important because people need to know that this organization, like, is, this organization is not about rehabilitating people to enter the workforce. Like Commissioner said, we're not broken. We're not trying to get over our disabilities. We are focusing on heightening our abilities to make us as competitive as possible in today's ever-changing job market. Our new name is about partnering with people and enhancing their skills and goals in ways that society still doesn't understand how to work with. Massability bridges that gap. It gives people hope that we're seen and understood and we are enough. Our lived experiences mean something. I'm excited and honored to be part of the communications team in an agency that is changing how, as a society, like Commissioner said, we think and talk about disability, accessibility, and inclusion. We are changing a system, propelling what's possible for the disability community. It is our goal that mass ability ignites a fire within all of us to keep pushing forward, to keep supporting each other, because we are stronger together. We are mass ability. So thank you for your attention and taking your time out of your day to be with us here today and for today's announcement. Um, and please welcome our next speaker, Colleen Holmes, President of Viability. It's always a test as to do I need the glasses or not. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to err on the side of Greetings to Governor Healy, Secretary Walsh, Commissioner Wolf, and all of the honored guests here today. Good morning. Good morning. I am honored to be here to mark this eventful day. I stand for and with the 4,300 individuals with a disability viability service, our skilled and dedicated staff team, and the many communities we impact across the Commonwealth working in partnership with the former MRC and other HHS agencies. On this day, a labeling barrier has been dismantled. At one time, rehabilitation was a big step forward from institutionalizing people with a disability. Pa pause for cringing. <laughs> 
Now, our state agencies ensure a vibrant variety of community-based services where individuals and their capabilities take center stage. And today marks another leap forward. Leaps come from leadership that hears, sees people, recognizes, understands, shapes a new way forward, and acts. This has been a constant theme in our partnership with what is now Mass Ability. For many years, Viability has worked closely with this state agency across Western Central and Eastern Massachusetts. It's a natural fit for us with our focus on employment services. Viability provides services across five states, and they all have different approaches to service delivery. In Oklahoma, for example, the culture is still around care and protectiveness around the disability, whereas our services are rooted in the practice of providing opportunity for everyone to thrive beyond limits. We appreciate having a kindred spirit in Tony Wolf and MassAbility for healthy, supported risk-taking recognizing that failing need not be failure. It is experienced gained on the road to success. Project VR Squared, where vocational reality meets virtual reality, is a program that we have that's a prime example of joining forces with MassAbility in pursuit of what I would call paradigm shifts. MassAbility supports this pilot program not only with funding, but with genuine curiosity, with time for learnings to unfold. And the results aren't all in yet, but the benefits for training individuals with a variety of disabilities, they're emerging from this pilot. The rebranding as MassAbility is further evidence of the willingness of Commissioner Wolf and her team and this administration to make real change. What's in a name? If you've ever been called out of your name, you have your answer. People with disabilities and the 37% of the people we serve at Viability who also identify as a person of color have had a lifetime of reductive, dismissive, bias in a box thinking where labels are weapons. Even well-meaning names can be othering. When a relative who shall remain nameless almost named her first child Winter Melody White, I had flashbacks to my own school days with my Irish first name and White as my last name. Roll call was last name first. Every school day, I suffered the mismatch of name and identity in the taunting when the teacher called out White Colleen. Names signal identity. Identity signals brand. Just ask any wannabe influencer with a ring light and a social media account. <laughs> Mass ability is aligning name to brand giving clarity, much needed clarity to employers who are seeking workforce options. It also signals the ever more inclusive, accessible experience the agency envisions and delivers upon. You've said it and I echo, it matters deeply. The pulling yourself up by your bootstraps mythology in the United States You've heard it. Mm hmm Makes it especially hard for any of us to ask for help. I see the major struggles of the individuals we serve at Viability to overcome the obstacles to getting help and hold on to dignity. It's a daily struggle. <coughs> And now, and going forward, 
because massibility is a door any of us could walk through. Stigma can go kick rocks. <laughs> Delivering the experience of a bold brand is a quest. It is all kinds of lumpy and bumpy, and, and it's not for the faint of heart. The heart I see with massibility is so strong. Congratulations to this team, to the administration, on the determination and hard work transformative change demands. Mm. Thank you. And I am pleased to welcome back to the podium Governor Healy. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Oh, great. great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, many thanks to, to Colleen and to Cindy and to Commissioner Wolf. Thank you for your leadership in initiating this important renaming and to Secretary Walsh. We're happy to take questions on topic. We have uh, Governor Dick Livingston and Biden for the main thing. I'm looking at our <laughs> fabulous chair, Jay Livingstone, um, and I really applaud him and thank him for his efforts. I certainly, with the team, will work hard to do the advocacy and, and build the support for this important name change. Do you wish to say anything? Uh, I can't speak for my colleagues in the <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Anything well, else? Why is this a priority? Um, well, you know, uh, first of all, I want to give great credit to Commissioner Wolf, who had this idea a few years ago and engaged in the stakeholder process to think through well, you know, where we wanted to, to get to. And so I just want to commend her for that vision and that thinking, that initiative. Um, when we started, it, um, it was an opportunity for us to, to hear from members of our team about things that they cared about, and this was one of the things that Secretary Walsh brought to my attention, something that Commissioner Wolf had put forward. I, too, had a similar reaction, let's just do it, um, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, appreciate that there is some process involved. But, you know, I, um, look, I, for me, it's pretty simple. I mean, it is about everything that Colleen and Cindy in particular spoke of today. You know, each of us is born with a range and a diversity of abilities. We are a richer society. We are a richer and stronger commonwealth when we make sure that we are supporting people with a range of abilities day to day, whether they're looking to go to school, live independently, go to work, build a career, raise a family. That's what this is about. And names matter because the labeling stigma is real. And there are any number of barriers to one's ability to be able to live out in the world in the ways I just spoke about. Some of those are physical barriers. Uh, some of those are barriers of mindset and perspective. And I think what's important is that we are saying as a state we're, we, we have a different vision than a vision that's going to uplift the abilities of all people in the state. And as a state and an administration, we have an opportunity to model that, to support that, while we encourage everybody else to do the same. So that is why it is a priority for our administration. And we're really thrilled with today's announcement and more excited about what it means um, in the time ahead. Can I just sit one, one second? Anything else on topic, though? Okay. Great. If you felt the path was here to go, Judge siding with you, where do you see families 7,501 staying? Yeah. Well, right now we, we have... We are, we are close to hitting capacity, which is why we put the word out weeks ago. It's why I made the emergency uh, declaration announcement, and it's why we 
we're clear about the cap and, and reaching reaching capacity really is what this is about. That's how we've talked about it. We, we, we've reached capacity when it comes to shelter space, service provider availability, and funding. I continue to call on the Biden administration for help and support, um, both through actual dollars and other ways to support infrastructure here in the state. Um, our teams have continued to be in dialogue with service providers, with community leaders. Um, you know, I hope we will see that continued collaboration and partnership. And again, I just want to thank people across Massachusetts for the ways in which people across this state has step, have stepped up um, to deal with what really is an unprecedented number. So in terms of what happens when we reach uh, capacity, as we have previously outlined, we've established a waitlist procedure, a procedure for prioritizing, for triaging, and for working to uh, place people according to that prioritization. We have also been clear as an administration, and we are doing something that I don't believe other states have yet to do, and that is working intentionally and actively on exiting people from shelter. That includes work authorizations. I am pleased that the Biden administration responded to our calls for request. Department of Homeland Security is here on scene next week uh, to help with the processing of people for work authorizations to get them working. There are so many employers right now across the state, across industries, looking to employ people. So that's one thing. We also have engaged directly with Mass Hire and our workforce boards around the state regionally to get people plugged in to employment opportunities. Again, all with a goal of helping exit people from shelter, um, helping them and their families get to a place of greater self-sufficiency. And finally, we stood up a 501c3 whereby we will be able to um, and engage with individuals in shelter and giving them work opportunities through job skills training and the like, which is a, a new and novel approach um, as we continue to look for ways to process people for work authorizations. But um, getting people working, building uh, self-sufficiency, um, exiting people from the shelter system, in addition to prioritizing those who are coming into the shelter system is what we've said we are going to do. Governor, Governor, you talked about, about triaging. Mm -hmm. Specifically, what are you going to be looking at? 